Good morning, this is Dr. Mo. I was super excited about a case that I saw in the morning and I thought I'll make a short video regarding that. Typically, you don't see regeneration in grade three vacations. And typical protocol is if you see a case based on McGuire classification, let's say everything else is uh, consistent, nothing changes. We're only going to talk about vacation based on McGuire. We can say any turf which has class two vacation, everything else is consistent is a poor prognosis. So grade three is really bad, really bad, even therapeutically, not just uh, diagnostically. It's a poor prognosis at best. So typically in such cases, what you do is you maintain status quo. You can do debridement, maintenance, uh, flap debridement, tunneling, hemisection, root resection, all those things. Typically, you don't do regeneration. Why? Based on the literature, for example, off the top of my head, you can think about Pontetario, I think the paper was published in 87. They had around 21 cases. They figured out from three, four millimeters uh, from a through and through recession, they could only gain, uh, close the, the frication in about uh, a millimeter or so in two out of 19 cases. So it's, it's not a predictable procedure. It's a difficult procedure at best. So we had a case. We ended up doing regeneration, long story short, why we did it, uh, patient wanted, long story short. Let's have a look at the case. So it's been about four months or so. So let me show you. So this was the case. As you can see, this is where the patient comes in and we can see that the there is something going on in the seven as well where uh, we can see, but six is the main area. Then clinically, you can see it's a big uh, infection going on in the area. When we reflect the flap, we can see the pus, the suppuration, the granulation tissue all around. And it was also there at seven, but we did something else for seven. So this is a nice picture. My probe, I'm going from the lingual side to the buccal side. This is the buccal side. You can see it's going through and through, uh, bad defect. This is another one. So we're still working, cleaning, debriding. Now, if you look at some of the other papers, for example, by Espositos, Esposito and others, they show when the defect vertical height is uh, over three millimeters, it becomes very difficult to manage. So in this particular case, it was around five. Uh, so <laughs> makes it even more challenging. So we added bone, we put the membrane, buccal, lingual, we stabilized it through the sutures, the special way of doing it. And then we closed it up. So the key thing was the passive closure, uh, hoping that the soft tissue stays where we would want it to be. On the seven, we just did minimal osteoplasty, odontoplasty, clean it up and let it be. Now this is the post-op, didn't take a picture at the post-op, missed, I wasn't at the clinic, but let's see how it looks at around four months. So this is how it looks. We'll, take, we'll see the patient again in about uh, three more months and then we'll keep following up. But let's, look at, let's have a look at the clinical picture. This is how it looks. Looks amazing. Okay, there's plaque and like, you know, I went over OHI, patient is scheduled for the hygiene. You don't want that, well, the whole thing, but you get the idea. It looks amazing. This is my probing. Now, look at this thing. I am, I am actually putting pressure, proper probing, and we are at three millimeters in that area. What about the distal? Again, it's hardly a two millimeter. So it looks amazing, looks really nice. This is what I want to share. Have a good one, take care, bye.